Welcome back, everybody, to the Scrumptious After Show for Game of Thrones. That was Tyrion Lannister. That is the good Sir Pappy, and I'm your host, Kat. It's the most sober I've ever seen him. I know. He looks He looks so posh. <laughs> But we digress. We're here to discuss what happened in Season 5, what we think is going to happen in Season 6. And we'll preface that with I, myself, have been on basically an internet and HBO blackout for the last six weeks. Yep. No trailers, no teasers, no nothing. Same. I, I accidentally watched the first three seconds of the trailer and I was like, no! Oh, click off! Yeah. No. And that was just because YouTube decided to... You know, it, it's autoplay commercials. It was like, you'd be interested in this. I'm like, yes, you're right, I would, but I can't. Yeah, but so. not right now, YouTube. Calm down. And uh, interestingly now, uh, we're on equal footing. Uh, there is no more the pure viewer point of view and the book reader point of view because there is no book. Thanks, HBO, for ruining our shtick. <laughs> but it is a little bit of funny, and I'm going to try and cover what I recall of book five that, you know, hey, maybe they'll do this, maybe they won't do that. And uh, you can just be like... Jon Snow is not dead. Jon Snow is not dead. <laughs> I'm going to cry it to the hills. I've been wearing my sweatshirt of solidarity for months now because yeah. he's not dead. That's my prediction is uh, Fire Crotch is going to bring him back. Going to bring him back. Yeah, which has already been proven as possible within the universe, both on the show and the book. So, yeah, and within the, her faction of crazy people. Yeah. Well, it so. is her faction that brings him back. Period. You know, none of the others do that. Yeah. And uh, we've got a lot, yeah, we got a lot to go over. Uh, let, let's cover uh, the the easy stuff. Who will not be in season 6 due to death and dismemberment? Stannis. <laughs> Possibly Jon Snow, but probably not. I was gonna, I was gonna say, wait, we can elaborate on that though, because uh, oh yeah, but I, I do believe that that was the last of the true Baratheons. There was Stannis and his wife, and yep. my favorite, and they're all dead. Yeah, yep. Uh, and so now all we have left is the blooming onion knight. And, uh, yeah, and that's one of the interesting ones. In the in the books, he is sent by Stannis to go find the youngest uh, Stark on an island of cannibals. Whereas in the show, they pretty much just literally wrote off that, that kid. Just Yeah, he's he, gone. Uh, what's the term? He was sent upstairs. <laughs> in the, the old 80s, you know, when you get rid of the kid, you just send him upstairs. He never comes back down. Yep. So he was sent upstairs on the HBO show, and we've never heard anything about him since season no. three? Thereabouts, yeah. He's off with the one wildling. Yep. So the, the Onion Knight is quite possibly going to experience a completely unique story from here on. Uh, com forced divergence from the books. <laughs> and uh, Stannis is dead. I should also point out, though, there are some fan theories that I did yeah. read post-season, you know, because we didn't physically see it happen. Yeah. I would be remiss after a couple arguments with some fellow fan people at Fan Expo if I did yeah, not state that, there's not visual confirmation that yeah. Stannis is dead. Which is interesting because Stannis plays a huge part in the books, and I'm, I'm curious, like, if maybe the show got ahead of it. You know, because they did speak that they worked, you know, they worked with J.R.R. Martin uh, up to this point. So maybe it hasn't happened in the book yet, or again, maybe they just went, you know what? We got somewhere else to go. By killing off one or two of the major characters, we might actually have enough room for plot development on the other 412 on the show. <laughs> uh, my favorite being, and I'm very curious to see what happens to Mr. Tyrion there. I mean, I know he's a major player in the books, or at least yeah, so you But again, me. you know, they skipped over a lot of it. He didn't have to do his... Uh, he, was, he was a miserable slave for most of the last novel. Like, literally, he was a slave. He was forced to basically be like a court jester. And uh, he's not in the show. He's, they skip right to the whole, hey, there's the Khaleesi. There's the uh, the dwarf who hates his family. Let's make shit happen. Yeah. Let's get her done. Uh, so, yeah, I'm curious to see where that develops. And, of course, we still have all the dissidents and everything going on. That yeah. was her part of the world. 
Cersei's out, but Marjorie is still imprisoned. And she's down to one kid. Yeah. That's because the, uh, the, the, her daughter is dead dead, right? Yes, her daughter dead. is dead dead on yeah. the boat with her dad dad, who is who not is, dead dead. But is now inching a lot closer to that pure protagonist that we've been seeing the development, you know, from just spoiled rich guy who did everything for family to adult who, uh, hey, maybe my family is pretty <laughs> fucked in the head and I should do other things. Well, frankly, he's running out of family. And that's why I think a lot of that, we're going to see him trying to make sure Cersei doesn't have much say over their last surviving child. Who's what, Tomlin? Shit, we should have maybe looked it up. (laughs) Um, But yeah. Not Joffrey! Yeah, uh, yeah, not Joff (laughs) is pure of heart, but he's just a little little weak-spined right now because he's 12. So I think we. So I I'm did hoping, think they aged him up a little bit in the show. Yeah, but I'm hoping that we're going to see a lot of family clashing there between uh, Cersei and her brother, so you know, over minimizing her uh, interaction with anything political. My ideal scenario is that Jamie teams up with Grandma Rose. And don't I, forget, we still have. Ron. Who just needs to continue to be amazing. Yeah. And then I'm happy. Yeah, as long as I keep having him in the show. Because, again, he was a, a background character in, in the last two novels. It was literally just like someone would mention, oh, we went to, because he got the lordship and married the girl who never stopped talking. Uh, it's like, and, you know, oh, we sent men to go tell him he has to help us, and then he killed that guy. And that's like in, just in a conversation. But in, in the show, we have Braun, which very smart move by the showrunners because uh, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, he is awesome. Uh there, here's a question for you, though, like, Mr. Book Reader. What do you think we're done with Dorn? Because they did kind of neatly wrap that up. Yeah, they did. But the daughters are still alive. And they may... Because who's the next conflict? If Jon Snow, even if he's not dead, he's going to be spending a lot of the season in recovery. And if Stannis is dead, his armies are gone. And Khaleesi is still too far away to have any, you know, solid uh, uh, impact via combat. And she's still working on the whole dragon thing, you know. Um, So I I really think Dorne has to be a major player in this if we're going to see any large combat scenes. Uh, You know, quite possibly, daughter's dead, blame Dorne, go to war. That's what I'm thinking this seasonal arc is going to be. Ooh, okay. You and I have differing opinions on that. I see a more snowy future. What with, we've, uh, you know, recapping back into season five, they they fought the wildling army and drove them back, and then the... Recruited the wildling army. Yeah, recruited as much of it as they could because they were invaded by the... Four horsemen of the White Walker variety. The four horsemen of the ice zombie apocalypse. So they added, but just numbers wise, like they added substantial numbers yeah. to their ranks in that. And that's conflict. curious. How are we gonna? Because even if again, even if Jon Snow survived, who's gonna help? I don't see him just still being the Night's Watch leader. You know, because the uh, the betrayal was all the top ranking people. So we'd have to survive and somehow kill off... And Ollie, that little bastard. Fuck Ollie. I like that there's a <laughs> subreddit just called Fuck Ollie. And it's just pictures of Ollie and fuck Ollie. So I appreciate that. I approve of Yeah, that. even if he survives, it, you know, who knows if, if it might not be that we skipped over his uh, little brother training to be the, you know, the seer and all of that. And he maybe he swoops in and has something to do with, with saving and reviving Jon Snow which would kind of pull him away from the Night's Watch. It's, it's, I'm really curious. You know, There's a lot of options up there, and they're all pretty cool options. It's just what is going to happen. I just, you know, I feel like from season one until now, we've been building to a head where, you know, it's gone from, like, little snippets and little whispers and little kind of one-off excursions in the north yep. to last season. It was in your face. Yep. Here's what we got to work yeah. with. Yeah, winter is coming. But I don't think... I think the ultimate arc in the the show, and quite possibly the books, is going to be Khaleesi taking over 
or at least getting to the continent and uniting enough armies to go to the wall and fight off the White Walkers. So I think this season is going to have to minimize that a certain amount because they have to get her over there. You know, they have to get her to Westeros. And that's not – that's if they do that this season, then they could wrap up in season seven and call it. I think they want to do like eight or nine. Yeah, I don't. I have not looked into that at all. I mean, I just, they I just want to do a hundred like... seasons because the money it prints. <laughs> yeah. No, I just feel like you know what what started is like a small, you know, like oh well, hey, there's stuff going on up there yeah. has now been thrown in our face in such a way where it's like somebody go deal with that. Yeah, which it was actually really interesting too with the way they ended it, uh, just like in the book it, uh, with with stabbing Jon Snow. It's like. In the book, at least they hadn't really confirmed the White Walkers to this level. But in the show, it's straight up, hey, uh, we have proof that there are millions of fucking zombies that they're going to invade. And everyone else goes, this would be a really great time to stab you and, yeah. you know, uh, well, there... disenfranchise all of the wildlings that joined our army to save themselves and save the entire fucking southern continent. So, yeah, let's just go go do that now while we're in our moment of most dire peril. It, it's kind of like, well, it made sense in the book, but in the show it makes less sense because of everything that happened, which I think is, is a little uh, – I think it was one of the few missteps that they made to end the season because if you take a step back as a rational human being and you look at – yeah, sure, Jon Snow, a lot of people didn't agree with his policies. But, uh, I mean, to think that killing him off at this moment uh, was the best move for everyone in the fucking Night's Watch safety – I mean, it takes a certain amount of stupid, and it didn't make as much narrative sense to me. No, I, I'm with you. I, I leave, you know, well, I left on many emotional levels <laughs> at the end of last season. But for me, it's, you know, it's like, okay, well, are you playing the longer game with them? Because it's like I said, you know, I feel like they were so thrown in our face, and they yeah. have such scaling numbers, and they're clearly moving south. South, yeah. So it's like, okay, are they shambling zombies and they move slow? Because that's not what you showed us. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, 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 and was they this moved a show? Yeah. Fast and, and with and a was person. this a show of force from the White Walkers just to prove that they can, or was it the beginning of the invasion? You know? Yeah. And that's inscrutable because they don't fucking talk. <laughs> Other than us having kind of an idea that at least one of the White Walkers was a former Stark, you know, well, like you know, one of the ones that had. You know, one of the former kings of the north or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like I got that little little suggestion from the way they were reacting to Jon Snow during the battle. Okay. Well, and, well, and the I sword. Yeah. that, too. Yeah, I was going to say, I took that more as reaction to the sword where it was just like, oh, shit, you still got stuff that can kill us down there? Damn. Yeah, and, uh, okay, and I hate to say it, but I think this season's also going to have a lot of Sir Blubble, Blubbery, Sir Blubbles. Sir Blibbles a lot. Sir, yeah, uh, because he hasn't even gotten to his damn destination yet. Well, He's you'll have to, to specify for our audience who Sir Blibbles is. I don't remember the guy's name. Whiny McFats a lot. Um, Sam. Sam, thank you. So you think, yeah, the easiest fucking <laughs> name in the entire novels, Sam. Sam and Gilly. Uh, Gilly. I like how she's grown a little bit, but... Yeah, he's supposed to go to the Citadel to train to be the, the next... Um, Maester. Maester, yes. Almost said Magister. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then get back to the uh, the wall, which takes several years. And again, in the books, they started doing that and having him, having him meet very important characters for further plot development because uh, the uh, Martin can't have less than 412 things going on at once in his books. <laughs> so we haven't met any of them yet. And I think one or two of them were confirmed in casting uh, from what little I saw. Uh, you know, because, like, the important thing is that... Uh, uh, I can't wait for episode one because that means we can actually look up casting yeah, stuff right. and, like, we won't be so blind. The only thing I do know, because I couldn't resist reading that little uh, blurb, is that uh, the guy from Deadwood, who sir swears a lot... Um, <laughs> Amazing actor, but yeah, he, uh, he always, it's everything, fuck is a comma. He has been cast in Game of Thrones as a character. That's literally the only thing I read, and I was like, awesome. And uh, so, let's see here. Uh, we pretty much covered the Lannisters. We pretty much covered, I mean, Khaleesi's going to keep doing that whole figuring out how to be a fucking dragon rider thing. 
Uh, oh, that was the other thing that was interesting is how uh, the, the the guy showed up down there. It's like I'm gonna I'm gonna help. I'm gonna show that I can tame a dragon, and then gets <laughs> melted. Yeah, he was a little more important in the books too. So I'm really really interested in this. Like he was he was a big deal in the books. He's still alive. But yeah, in the show, it's just like, hey, how's it going? I'm a prince. I'm on fire, and I'm dead. All right. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Uh, uh, so let's, uh, let's I love cover. those moments, though. Those are what I, I truly refer to as the by felicia moments of Game <laughs> of Thrones, where it's just like, hey, I have pedigree and background and money and prestige, and oops, I'm dead. Bye, yep. Felicia. Like, yeah. <laughs> but then again, that's also how the show... Uh, I think that's the only way the show can handle being open and, ended, open and closed seasons for the most part, because they can't have as many threads. They just, they just can't. So. All right, so let's consolidate this. We'll do a little quick, quick fire refresh here. So the Lannisters, you have Jamie and Bronn who are sent to Dorne to save Marcella, the yeah, daughter. Um, yeah, Marcella or Marcella. Uh, yep, and then she got poisoned. And then by... she got poisoned by, uh, well. yeah, the kiss of death from Mama Viper there. Yep, which I think will start a war, and you're not sure. I don't necessarily think it'll start a war. I think it will start a power play That's fair. And in Cersei's, the Tyrell's favor. Cersei's out, but the... Uh, she had her walk themselves? of shame. Yeah. What do they call themselves? The, uh, the, the, the poor? Oh, Whatever. I don't know, but the, high, the, the lead guy's the High Sparrow. Yeah, the High Sparrow. So the Sparrows. We'll just call them Sparrows uh, until we actually remind <laughs> ourselves of so those nouns. Uh, they have a lot of power going on right now. Yeah. And then up in the north, Jon Snow is possibly dead, but mostly dead, but not definitely dead. And Stannis may or may not be dead, but we're all assuming he has been murdered by your, your favorite character, the Jolly Green Giant. And then we've got the two surviving Starks. We have Sansa, who last we saw was jumping. Yeah, jumped <laughs> off, jumped off uh, um, Winterfell. Yeah. Into the walls the... of Winterfell into... Like, very high snow. <laughs> yeah. Her survival, um, again, as somebody who lives in winter, I don't doubt her survival in the least. And she was joined by Theon. Reek. Theon. I am no more Theon. There is only Reek. No, because see, that act that he did yeah. proved yeah. that there is still Theon. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to redeem himself. Now, we did get... Uh... I do know that there's going to be more stuff going on on the show with the... Uh ocean people again nouns fuck them uh, but uh, theon's family the Greyjoys. yes and we're going to see very important characters uh his uncles that again now in the in the novels one of his uncles comes back to because you know theon's father's dead in the book and then the two uncles come one's a priest one's a pirate and then his sister is also there and they're all they have to they do a moot basically to vote for the next king and uh, the Pirate King has an item that may or may not be able to either control or outright murder a dragon. Ew. Because he went sailing into the, the, the wasteland uh, where, the, uh, where another country used to be, and then it got blown up. <laughs> I, know, it's not I there should have just grabbed the awesome giant book that you gave me so I could just... Oh, yeah. No. You know, Probably, um, but but no, we're trying to keep things on track. Yeah. Um, so as far as the Starks go, I'm just doing it house by house. It's easier for okay. me. Okay. So uh, as far as the Starks Sansa's go, Sansa's in midair. Yeah, Sansa's yeah. in some snow. John's in some snow. Uh, a you little more red snow. snow. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Arya, Arya, little Lola, Lola is uh, blind. Uh, yeah. Because she she done stole from the uh, people of many faces. Yeah, and then, okay, so and then down to the Baratheons, possibly done now, done, and uh, Marjorie and Grandma Rose. Marjorie. Now Marjorie's in jail, so is her brother. Her, her, her gay brother, yes. Yeah. Well, he, remember, they offered him freedom to speak out against her, right? Yeah, I just don't know if they actually, like, we don't know if he was released yeah. or not, I don't believe. Um, but I feel yeah, we're, like... we're great with it, so we're super fans for gay brother. 
I, don't judge me. Nouns. It's been a year. Yeah. Well, it's not like I ever knew the real names of people anyway. I was kind of the, the name guy. <laughs> yeah, you're letting me down this episode. It's a great way to kick off the season. Um, uh, okay. And then but I see a lot spirit. of moves from Grandma Rose. Uh and Marjorie's dad's out too. So you, I mean, you have yeah, both yeah, of the yeah. heads of House Tyrell are still in play. I'm looking at my my awesome lights that I couldn't get working uh, behind. Oh, me. to see who yeah. we're missing. See well, what house? I think we, we covered. should also all. mention that with Stannis being defeated, that leaves House Bolton like unopposed. Uh, oh, and that's a major one. Yes, uh, vampire in control Bolton. of Winterfell. The, the, my favorite fan theory is Vampire Bolton. Uh, the the father Roos, he's actually uh, a, a skin, like a skin wearer, not a skin walker, but every couple of years he just skins somebody and fucking wears that for a while. <laughs> That's why he's always so pale and soft spoken, but people are always afraid of him. And then Psycho Son, you know, it, it's it's it's, the it's true 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 father son companionship there. You know, don't make me regret ever having raped your mother. <laughs> Which is so weird because, like, the wife seems so, like, ah, da, da, da. like Oh, no, that's, uh, in the books, again, they point that out, that was deliberate. He wanted to marry for power, so he picked just the most malleable woman with the most land that he could, could, could. Yeah, she yeah. just seems, like, so just unfazed yeah. and oblivious, like, she's just kind of off on her own she's, little planet. Well, she's kind of an idiot, like. <laughs> In, in, again, in the books. Like, I just remember like, the scene where they're having dinner and she's just like, oh, Sansa, you look so lovely. You know, yeah. it's just like... It kind of reminds me of, like, the uh, <laughs> the old king in The Princess Bride. You know, I'm going to kill myself tonight. Oh, that's nice, dear. <laughs> yeah, that's she nice. me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's kind of her mentality. But, again, they do hold Winterfell and uh, my understanding is, is by house rules... He who controls Winterfell controlleth the North. Yeah, he's kind of the king of the North right now, which is even scarier. (laughs) And like I I said, the only one who was opposing him was Stannis, and that fell through, so... Yep. Failed attacks. However, the only allies that the Boltons really had down in the capital are the Lannisters, so... But again, I mean, Cersei's out. Well, Cersei's out, but all their dealings seem to be with Daddy Lannister, so I'm curious to see how his passing... That's that's a good point, yeah. And uh, they haven't really dealt with that other than Cersei taking more and more control and then finding her breaking point. And not really a house, but I think we should mention that uh, Baelish was heading up to talk to the Boltons. Or did he make... I can't remember if he made it. I but I don't... know he was in Root. Like, I know yeah. Roos was demanding that, like, yeah. you need to come speak to me. Yeah, and uh, Baelish is another big player. You know, he, uh, him and uh, our lovely bald buddy are the, the two, I think, that know the most about what's going on politically. Like, they're the ones with the most wheels in motion at any given moment. Yeah. With the, long, the most long-term planning. You know, Ro- uh, Roos, this is what he wanted. He wanted the North. He's got the North. This was kind of his goal the whole time. And I feel the difference between Baelish and the Spider is Baelish wants to take all of the power pieces for Mm -hmm. himself. Yeah. Whereas the Spider is content to manipulate and play the board. Yeah, I I did read a a comedy article about fan theories on it, so I like the one where he's actually a merman. (laughs) Which one? (laughs) The spider. Oh, okay. The spider is actually a merman. That's why he's. That's why he's got no beds because he's. He's yes. half fish. He's half fish. Fucking why not, right? And uh, that's why <laughs> sure. he's. Sure. So, that's why everyone thinks he's so slimy. <laughs> and, oh, uh, well played. <laughs> so, we are missing one Stark. But we haven't seen him for a full season because he's up there with Hodor. Yeah, no, I'm intentionally missing one star. Well, hopefully we'll see Hodor, Hodor this season, uh, with or without Bran. I just hope that he just rolls in and does his daytime job, which is DJing, and he's just under the tree like, wicka, 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 wicka. Hodor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, again, <laughs> again, important component because he needs to be able to control animals and people and, and see in time and stuff. 
uh, see back in time to uh, not only piece together his place in all of this, but also maybe help us as the viewers understand why the fuck he even exists. Why what do is- we need you? <laughs> why do we need you in yeah. a tree? And that's why the training- three-eyed bird. Yeah, that's why the training is important both for him and the viewers to justify his existence. <laughs> like, what use are you? I don't understand. Explain yourself. And hey, you talk about the whole aging process catching up real quick. I think with him, you know, you, you cast a 10-year-old and now he's 17. It's like, well, in the books he's still 13. Yeah, well, no, can't fucking pretend <laughs> that anymore. No, I, you know, but that... Like, he's inside a magical tree. They can really write what yeah. I got into that. Time moves differently within the tree. Yeah, great. You know, nothing better than a kid going through puberty while filming. Hold oh, on, we have to save them. I felt that way about a lot of the kids on the show, though. It's like, oh. Well, some of them were straight replaced, too. I mean, yeah. we're on our, our third little brother of, of Joffrey, I believe. Second Are we? Yeah, I know we're at least, at least the second. I, I need to go back and double check some. I, I, yeah, I knew they had replaced him once, and then, like, Dario, we're on... Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we're okay. on our third mountain. Who is now a zombie? In robes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, the mountain's in full plate. He's just a zombie now. Oh, I thought he was just in robes when he... Well, yeah, but I'm, we're going to see him... He's We're going to basically see him as a, a giant fucking, you know, automaton, <laughs> basically. Uh, so, a, not a major plot point, but... Future violence points. Uh, non-house people, who's left around uh, the the mother of dragons other than Tyrion and the guy who's slowly going to die of the scaly death? Oh, yeah, T-Virus man. <laughs> who caught the T-Virus? Because yeah. ah. uh, the female lead is still alive. Uh, yeah, Grey Worm's still alive. Grey Worm's still alive, but he's hurting. Yeah, and old man badass is the one who died. Yes. Yeah. He Saving Grey Worm. Yeah, Old Man Badass. That's his official legal name. Yeah, that is his legitimate title. That's what's on his tombstone. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, we're, and again, we're going to skip a lot. Now, I think what we're going to see And you with still her, have Dario is still alive. Yeah, yeah who's a, I, one of the better replacements. Definitely. Yeah, I felt that I was an see, upgrade. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what what is going to be nice is I think what we're going to see, in my prediction, is we're going to see her face up to what it's like to actually be a ruler because I think in this, again, at the end of uh, the last half of, the, of uh, book six, five, whatever, book last, uh, <laughs> the whole continent that she was on started uh, mobilizing for war and had her hemmed in. So she was actually fighting the traitors within and uh, armies without. I think that's what they're going to focus on this season so we're not going to see a whole lot of development outside of the books from her other than you know you know yeah meeting up with with her at the beginning rather than the end uh, and again well she flew off right yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, so as far as we know like she that's right yeah so we're, i think we're going to see a combination <laughs> Well, we're going to see a combination of the books. I don't want to say what happens to her in the book because it's a little bit of a spoiler since we haven't seen it in the show. But I think we're going to see a combination of two things happening simultaneously rather than one after the other. And if you've read the novels, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I don't want to spoil it because it would be pretty cool to see if I'm right. <laughs> oh, we love the predictions game here. Yeah. All right, so cast predictions for season six. This is pretty easy. Uh Brienne is going to find Sansa and Sion, and I think that their best bet at this point is to flee to Sion's... The Greyjoys? The Greyjoys, okay. yeah. Uh, Team Squid. <laughs> Team Kraken. Um, that's my prediction for, for those three. Uh, I, and that takes Brienne out of the equation with the wall. I see the Onion Knight ending up at the wall just in time to help a revived from Fire Snatch, Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> what, you asked for my prediction? Uh, revived Jon Snow. The Wildlings, I do believe, will go with Jon Snow. Mm-hmm. I feel like a revived Jon Snow's first priority is going to be get the Boltons the F out of Winterfell. Because at this point, Jon Snow has no 
reason to stay loyal to well, the and plot. he's the only one who really seems to understand the dangers of the uh, beyond the, the the Great Wall. So I think unless he unites the North, he can't mobilize the people. Necessary. That's exactly it. And I feel like you know, um, with Sansa kind of whisked out of the equation and him not really having an idea of anything about her. Um, nor would the Onion Knight, really. So, like, no new intel coming there. Either way, Jon Snow has a, uh, has a, uh, a stake. Okay. So know. here's my shot on that one. Sansa unites the North, and Jon Snow unites the Wildlings, and it's not until the end of this season or the next one that they even realize they're working in tandem. I think Sansa's going to somehow be used as a figurehead to depose the Boltons. Again, yeah, but with predictions. Who, predictions. Yeah. That's oh, all. yeah. But like yeah. with who? Because it's not like the, she's just going to run out into the north, you know. The and, Onion Knight. The Onion Knight is out of of women, young women who need him. He needs to find another one. Shut up. <laughs> uh, okay. Talk so about that. I think there's going to be a battle with Dorne uh, once the uh, Cersei I gets the news like of Marcella's death. Gonna... And you yeah, think there's just going to be politics? Yeah, I feel I feel like Dorn is going to be like such a footnote this season. Okay, and again, I mean, we could already be wrong based on the trailers. So oh yeah, we don't know. Straight up. Yeah. yeah, we could have people watching this who saw the trailer. They're like, "You guys are idiots." <laughs> We're gonna actually watch no. the trailers <laughs> this week, just so when we when we do our first episode recap next Sunday, we can also be like, "Hey, we're all wrong. Moving on." Yeah. Or "Hey, we're right. Moving Everything on." Everything was wrong. Um, Moving Tyrion. Wrong. I think Tyrion helps. Uh, well, again, I can't say what I think Khaleesi's going to do first, but I think Tyrion is going to play a large part in getting her up to speed this season and nudging her to become the kind of leader she needs to be. You know, finding that balance between caring for the people and also murder-fucking everyone who stands in her way. Yeah. Because if there's one thing a Lannister knows, it's how to murder-fuck their enemies. Or their parents. <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> Um, yeah, with Khaleesi, like, I see more conflict in the future, and I hope, I can't even say it as a prediction, I just hope that she goes more badass and less waif. Like, yeah, cause that's we what had, I want out of her as a character. We had three seasons of solid growth towards badassery, and I think the last season really fucking pulled her away from that. Oh, yeah, I was so mad, because it was like... Where's, like, the woman who was, like... And I understand that emotional growth is necessary, but, yeah, it was a little too far. You know? Well, yeah, they, they made her too bleeding heart and not enough, like, dictator. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sorry, uh, the... you can't have both, like... Arya, what do you think Arya's gonna do? I think she's gonna have to pay some penance to the many-faced god yeah, so she can I, uh... get her functioning face back. Back. She hasn't caught up to the books yet, so I, I'm just going to predict more training. I don't think we're going to see her leave Bravos this season. I don't think she's going to leave Bravos, but I think she, I, I foresee her hitting a point in her training where it's like, conform to what we're telling you to do, or die. Like I yeah. see that fork in the road. So, coming. do you think that she's going to actually become a faceless one and give up on all of her vengeance, or do you think she's going to somehow actually manage to get enough training? to go back to the mainland and wreak her vengeance. That's the big question. Because these guys, the we've, we've proven these faceless ones are not stupid. She can't fool them. Yeah. You know, there comes a point when they know that she hasn't absorbed all the lessons. And in order to fully absorb the lessons, she has to eventually just stop caring about her own personal vengeance. As, so it's like, well, story arc, it'd be cooler to see her go back and, and murder fuck more people. <laughs> Uh, you know, get her revenge on that litany of names. But it would also be interesting to see her straight up become a faceless one and then in the future maybe get hired by someone who's just like one of our other main players, pays the temple, I need you to kill Cersei. And she's and they're like, all right, you, you're, you're, you're a proven assassin, go kill Cersei. And then we see that at this point, but Arya's just like, oh, how convenient. I, was, I, I don't was, know. I almost, like it's, 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 to me, it's the most interesting story arc because to fully become who she wants to be, she has to give up on all of her personal vengeance. So if we ever saw her getting revenge after that, she wouldn't be the same Arya that we watch now. I don't know. I almost, I almost see her like, you know, doing the training and everything and being like, nope, totally giving up on everything and like almost like message in a bottle style. Yeah. 
Yeah. Be like, you are Arya Stark, like, of House Stark. Like, leave herself like a, you know, oh, God, what was that movie? Memento? Like, yeah. Just, you well, know. It, the sword's still hidden, right? Or do they find it? Like, see, that's something I, I have. I no, have, they didn't find it. Yeah. So that sword is still so hidden. She, yeah, she, you know, still has her little keepsakes of, like, you know, don't forget who you are. So I think, you know, I think we'll see that schism. I'm leaning yes. more the way that she'll, you know, go, yep, yeah, nope, I'm totally on board. Okay, you think she'll be able to keep a, a part of herself long enough to break with the ranks after training? Yeah. Okay. I think I think once she hits a point where they, like, let her loose out into, you know, the world, like, first thing she's going to do is go nab that sword. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting. Be like, well, thanks, everybody. Definitely with the with all the training that she's received from various people over the course of the show, she has the potential to be the deadliest. I'm picturing it like Batman re Ra's al Ghul League of Assassins style, where it's like, yeah, no, thanks for all the training, but I'm still gonna go be Batman. Yeah, you know, which uh, you know, which could lead to like if we hooked her up with uh, the Jelly Green Giant and Braun, they pretty much just win all. <laughs> The fights. They win all the things. They win all the fights. You know, done. It's game over, man. I'd say huh. uh, the the, the awesome missing? uncle. Okay. Well, I mean, we... well, no. As far as my predictions go, I see Cersei going total batshit nanners. I see Cersei losing a lot of support, but I also see I, bold prediction is that the show drags out the Marjorie trials. Because in the book, I'm pretty sure she got released before Cersei. It's been two years, but I'm, I'm still pretty confident about that. I foresee the one misstep HBO doing is dragging out Marjorie in prison for way longer than anyone gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She can stay in prison if it means I get to see more of Grandma Rose making power plays. So. Yeah, and that's... Uh, I, th- I, I hope that we're going to see a little bit more from the Tyrells, just as a family. I that. think we will, but I see, like, Cersei almost going just, you know, I mean, totally, like, cloistering herself off with just the mountain and the maester. Oh, you think... just, like, going You think she's going to stop all her power play stuff and just go full paranoia? Yeah. Okay. I okay. see I... her going, like, full nutters and, like, almost Mad King style, where it's, like, just, you know, having people killed off. Where okay. Where it's, like, well, you were part of what happened to me, because none think... of it's my fault. I don't think... That's been done yet, but I think uh, when she finds when she gets news of her daughter's death, that will break her. Uh, yeah, that, whatever's left. That's just it. It's like Jamie comes home. She knows that that Marcella is dead, and she goes nuts. But that could easily sway into your uh, pitch too, where it's like, then round up the army and go kill Jorn. Yeah. You know, it's like what fucking army? Have you seen the shit we've done the last couple of years? Yeah, round up the three men left. And you, send them you, south. you guys there. Yeah. But somebody's going to have to deal with the sparrows yeah. at some point. Like and you, that's, you can't just leave them to run the city. And citadel. that's where, because uh, the sparrows are going to be the biggest problem when, when Khaleesi gets to Westeros. Because they're religious fanatics. And their religion doesn't allow for dragons. <laughs> at all. But I wonder if she can actually take advantage of that. Whole, oh, hey, I give a shit about my subjects too. Hey, let's work together, you know. But I think, to an extent, she'll need the Sparrow's armies and Dorne intact in order to, to fight off the major threat yeah. from the north. So if there is battle, again, I still think there's going to be battle, but I think Dorne, there won't be a winner or a loser if Dorne goes to war with Westeros or vice versa. I don't know. I, I hope we see some... Because remember, Dorne is the only independent there. kingdom because Dorne has never fully been uh, held. They've been invaded temporarily, but because they're desert fighters uh, and Westeroses are more or less giant wusses when it comes to sand, they were never able to. They were never able to understand that because again, in, in, pocket in the books, sand. There was a lot of, of sla- the Dornish are also not, also excellent at slash and burn and then surviving in the desert. So they would just be like, oh hey look, uh, those the dumbasses are invading again. We're going to set fire to our town and go into the desert because we can survive. Yeah, and now these fucktards don't have any way to to replenish their supplies whatsoever, and then they die in the desert, and then oh, we'll just go rebuild the town now. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
So uh, they sound like Oklahomans. Yeah, and I think, like I said, I think Sansa gets used to try and reunite. I think you know we're going to see more Greyjoys, but I don't know that they're going to push it beyond the novels. I really because they got a half a book's worth of, of Greyjoy shit they haven't even touched. So I don't think that's because now we're seeing this going beyond, but this not catching up. You know, now we're going to see all these parts where people who read the books are still going to be like, okay, at least this is familiar. But then again, everything with with Tyrion and and most of the things with the whole southern continent are, are caught up and passed. You know, the Lannisters are passed. Jon Snow is caught up. Hodor is Hodor. Ultimate prediction, Ed and the Sun. The stone men rally in an army and go, fuck everybody. Ultimate prediction, Jon Snow is not dead. Stannis is. Well, I meant ultimate as in, like, totally oh. far-fetched. Oh. Ultimate, not gonna happen. Uh, Jon Snow, Tyrion, and Khaleesi are all second cousins, and then they end the uh, the whole the whole series uh, married to each other. And each and one Tyrion, gets a dragon. And Tyrion just rides on Jon Snow's back, <laughs> and, and then they change their names to Hodor and Bran. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> Well, if you've stuck it out this long, you are... <laughs> sorry, and thank you. Yeah, we, we wholeheartedly apologize, but thank you very much. This has been our blind predictions slash season five recap. Time to get excited, guys. I know. We'll see you in a week. Less I'll, than a week. I'll put more things up, I swear. Yeah, you, know, you can't compete with my level of stuff. No. Although it's not Game of Thrones stuff, except for except for John over there. See, he's not dead. He's I got dead. fucking Christmas lights. <laughs> jingle, jingle. <laughs> jingle. <laughs> I got Game of Thrones chains. Never, jingle, never jingle, go, jingle, jingle. Never go shopping at a store specifically for geek. HBO stuff. Yeah. Well, it's uh, and again, they need to have, but it's a place called Box Lunch. Oh. Unpaid advertisement. Uh, but yeah, you don't just walk in there when you're thinking, oh, I really need to decorate Game of Thrones stuff. Half off Christmas lights! <laughs> oh, thank you, viewers. You're so, you're so tolerant of us. But yes, we will see you in less than a week. The hopes is, is we will be up night of in some capacity or another. We have not figured out the whole live pre-recorded debate. Uh it's it comes down to how much YouTube cooperates with uploading. Yeah. Or we just do a, say screw it and do a live stream and then put up the recording Monday. So you get, you either make the live stream or you don't. I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure that out. <laughs> so. But I make too many way. verbal mistakes for that sometimes. Either way, we will see you all in one week, April twenty fourth. Be there. Bye, everybody! Be there or be like Jon Snow. On the ground bleeding. Too soon, man. Too soon. <laughs>